Right, this is going to be a quick one for the 12 HT boys. I sort of got a bit of a request. They sort of say, hey, can you give us a quick rundown on what bolt does what? Because every time I touch this one, I don't get any more fuel out of it and the idle carries on. All right, so yeah, I think I can. We've got a 12 HT in the bench here at the moment. And look at this. We've got another one, funny enough, sort of half laid out going together. So we can um, briefly give you a you know quick rundown and show you what's inside this and what does that but keep it simple that's our manual stop lever which we know a 12 ht doesn't um doesn't utilize that but that's what it's used for when we want to spill time it's see the the notch here it lines up with that notch and that's where we've got to have it if we want to spill time a 12 ht correctly on number one so that's the that's the spill line all right, it's pretty basic. We'll keep it basic. Fuel inlet. That's where we connect a rack gauge on the vehicle. You don't need to know about that as long as the pump shop's done it right. You don't need to get in there. Lift pump. Well, that's, again, very simple. In, out. Oil feed to the pump. This particular one doesn't have an overflow valve. All 12 HTs run an 0130 overflow valve, but this one's been put into a 75 series Land Cruiser. So, uh, yeah, look, the guys that understand it, fluently understand why it's just got a 2H dead head screw on it. Does the same job, same lift pump, 0970 on 12H versus 2H. So, doesn't matter if it runs an overflow valve or it's dead headed um, for this particular purpose. It's going to be in a 75, so they're not going to run fuel lines all the way back to the tank. Um, simple. Throw the old dead head screw in. Right, now, the, the, uh, all the crucial ones. I know the guys will be keen to know what's all in here. So this is our aneroid or AFC for a 12 H. That's our maximum rack or we'll keep it simple. That's our maximum fuel screw. Cause when we do a set in here, when we set all the elements to a set, the only way to adjust the overall fuel is to adjust the rack once we've done that. So this one here I'm pointing to 10 mil unlocks it. Three mil Allen key adjusts it. That's the rack limit or the maximum rack in here you have the torque curve cams 10 mils don't go touching any of that you don't need to be mucking around in there it just makes a mess of it try and leave it as it is that's for us to be playing with it when the torque cams get worn in here we need to adjust it so the governor follows it's um it's racking rpm spring rate heavily overlooked in here um nothing rocket science in there you just got a 10 mil allen key to undo that or whatever whatever means you have that just is just spring light like a normal ve uh, or a normal 7100 p pump it's a normal spring rate so it's got a star wheel in there like your old school shoes in your brakes at the rear of your drum brakes there uh very similar star wheel adjustment so it's no different on this one clockwise or screw it in Makes the spring rate softer. When you screw it out, it makes it harder. Now, keep in mind the springs in these are pretty amateur. So a lot of the time a standard spring, you'll be screwing the spring rate. You won't be doing much. Yeah, there's there's a few mods we do there to um, actually make the spring rate and the AFC work pretty good for a 2H. But keeping it standard and just want a little bit more fuel, you can get spring rates, can make the turbo come on there. Now, the probably the best one, the, the the most common one a 12 HT needs is because their no boost fuel is friggin' terrible. They run in 30 odd cc's of fuel no boost from standard. Well, that's pretty lazy when anyone goes and puts a big Glen Munro on there or a big G turbo or anything along them lines. That that old no boost, she needs a couple of turns to get up to about 50 cc so the turbo comes on song. Still keeps these engines clean, don't get me wrong. They still pretty clean even if you give them about 50 cc no boost. So again, 12. And you can adjust that one with the old flat blade. 12 and flatty, that's a no boost. AC kick up, that's self explanatory. That adjusts the AC kick up. You can adjust that there, to carry the load. Um, just works on the idle. Now, high idle, yeah, look, we play with that pretty heavily. Gets these pumps performing. If you know what you're doing on the vehicle, we well, use can do that too. And it, um, it makes these things liven up, don't get me wrong. So that's what's called the high idle adjustment or. Let's keep it simple. Maximum throttle. Maximum throttle. Righto. The old buffer. Now, 22, 7 8, shifter, whatever you got handy. That is the uh, rack, rack dampener or the idle buffer. So it's, um, it's best adjusted on the car. Actually, it's best adjusted on the vehicle. But we adjusted in here. Now, all it says is to give 
a little bit of a bump. So we adjust to that idle, make sure the rack gets a bit of a bump. 99% of the time on the vehicle is the best way to do it. Each engine is a little bit different on how it carries its load and how it wants to come back to an idle. So we sort of heavily suggest that if you know you want it to come back to an idle a little bit slower, um, you do a lot of four-wheel driving, aggressive four-wheel driving, you can stiffen them up so they um, so they don't bog as much, I guess. Um, dropping the clutch hard, that sort of thing. This is what this um, buffer's designed to do. Help carry the load, help cap dampen the rack, coming back to an idle. Now, early pumps don't have it. So we have, we have got these on back order. We've had them on back order for freaking months. But we are got these in stock and we used to carry them. Um, again, like we ran out, but we have got them on back order. And it's literally, we can put these on to early pumps that didn't incorporate that. Makes them drive a lot nicer and that makes them behave like a late pump. Flyweight adjustment. Yep, no one needs to be in there. Just makes a mess of it. So that's a quick rundown of it. Um, we'll show you one. Yeah, a bit more exploded view, I guess. We've got the R08 governor on this pump. It's going to be calibrated, um, you know, in, in the coming weeks. Just working on a few parts to sort of, yeah, get done and wait. wait. So that's what I'm talking about when we say we do a rack set. Uh, each little one of these little individual quadrants here is what we calibrate up to, um, to the same as each other. So they produce the same CCs of fuel. Uh, we use don't need to be in there mucking with them quadrants. That's when you get an out of balance fuel delivery, over fuel one cylinder, under fuel a cylinder. Don't need to be doing that. So we'll get into this a little bit more intricate. So this is the um, this is the AFC. We've got one, like I said, we've got one here. We'll try and sit that up here. Now that one there, that fuel, that Mac rack set, fuel set, maximum rack, whatever you want to call it, that is is this here so if i show you down in here me screwing that back and forth when the turbo boost comes on try and get this in here you'll see that's what it hits on that screw is the limit so you can adjust that to get like i said more rack and if you want less fuel well you wind that in to um give you less fuel on boost if you want more you wind it out and that's what it's doing in there so, the buffer, that's the actual buffer here. It, um, very simple, but it's just a little spring-loaded buffer. You can see that there. So that screws in there and just, just very light spring, sort of carries the, carries the rack weight. That's the aneroid push rod, right there. That comes in here. I don't know if we're gonna be able to do this too well. We'll see. That, come on, I'll go. That goes in here clips in there, clips on behind that, and that push rod is then indirectly connected through here onto that spring plate in there. That spring plate goes that way. Diaphragm, and you have the other plate, and that bolt comes up through that diaphragm so when the turbo boost comes in, into the back here, to the back, to this one right here, that's what moves it. So diaphragm in here, through the coupled through this push rod, that clips onto the torque cam follower, which then has the rack limit adjustment there. The no boost works on adjusting adjusting the overall push rods start position so it comes through the back here like i was just trying to get there done before but too hard with one hand so that rod comes up through the back here and that is what is coupled to that no boost adjustment there's a little bit more to it don't get me wrong we can um like the standard spring rates in certain pumps bottom out before the star wheel so you don't even get to get to your follower here um other ones you can adjust that all the way out and you actually start turning the fuel off because of the cut on the helix of the element so a little bit more in, into it don't get me wrong there's a lot more into it but just the, the 12 ht boys wanted me to give you a quick rundown and um, show you the, the basic, like what does what and what's what on a 12 HT pump. So, all right. Anyway, this one's um, where we're at with this stage. So new DV holders, 
new elements, new camshaft bearings, new throttle shaft, throttle shaft bushes, all been reamed. Um, gaskets, waiting on a few bits and pieces so we can start putting this back together. And, um, and we'll, um, we might do a Lindsay. Might calibrate the 12 HT up. Anyway, in due course. All right, there you go, 12 HT boys. Any questions? Go for it.